Uh, my name is Fai Fehrman and I work for Ericsson and I am involved in uh, open source, especially with the open source project called Open Platform for Network Functions Virtualization, which deals with uh, open s integration of open source components. And Yolanda? Okay. Uh, I work at Red Hat. Uh, I'm an FE partner engineer. So what I mostly do is help partners uh, or customers, telcos, in the NFB area with OpenStack integration, like taking all the NFB features and integrating to their products, especially on OpenStack. So, uh, since the beginning of this uh, track, you have been uh, listening to different talks that are mainly talking about different STN NFB technologies such as uh, VPP, DPDK, ONAP, uh, and so on. And all these components are uh, developed integrated and tested by different open source communities and they're all doing great job and uh, they all try hard to make sure these components work fine. But in open source, there are not many communities that are dealing with integrating all of these components, integration of these components and there was a gap there who, uh, which needed to be solved and especially when it comes to network functions virtualization, and if you look at traditional networks, how they are built, uh, it was obvious that the uh, traditional networks are not uh, possible to scale or not possible to uh, build uh, using open uh, technologies, and it wasn't uh, so easy to innovate in that space in traditional networks. And based on uh, these uh, concerns, HCNFV came up with this NFV architecture uh, in 2012, about five years ago, to see how the networks can be uh, developed and built up using these new technologies, such as cloud virtualization and lately containers and cloud native. And as we all know, standards do a great job, but sometimes uh, standard work takes a bit longer than uh, some might want it to be. And based on these concerns or thinking, uh, this uh, open source project, Open Platform for Network Functions Virtualization, in short, OPNFE, uh, was established around the end of 2014, so it's about three and a half years ago, to uh, do uh, integration work using these different technologies in parallel to standards work to see if the idea, the architecture works, and at the same time, if the components developed by different open source communities work well together to build this platform up. So basically, the Open Platform for Network Function Virtualization Project uh, aims to create a reference platform for NFV using open source components, open source technologies. And this is uh, kind of a bit challenging because when you look at NFV stack and NFV architecture, you see many different uh, things that like NFVI itself or compute, or if you go down in your bare metal nodes and you have uh, on top of it, you have virtual uh, networks, virtual storage and virtual compute resources there, and then your NFVI, you have mono, then you put VNFs on top of it. So it's really a challenging work to uh, bring up this platform using open source components. And since the day one, OPNV has been trying to do this by uh, bringing different uh, technologies together, such as OpenStack or OVS, DBTK, and lately Kubernetes. And while doing this, OPNV uh, tried to be a bit on the safe side, meaning that we started with using stable release, released versions of all these different uh, technologies, components. When it comes to OpenStack, we wait for OpenStack to do their official release. After six months, we take that release into OpenFE and try to integrate it with other technologies such, such as STN controllers. And it's similar to STN controllers as well. We have Open Daylight on us and Open Control there, and we take stable uh, official releases of STN controllers as well, and we integrate released version of OpenStack with released version of Open Daylight, for example. And we do this for all the different components we get from open source communities. In STM space, we have, as I mentioned, Open Daylight, Open Contrail, ONOS. We have uh, virtual switching like OVS and uh, VPP there. Uh, we have uh, mono components such as uh, Open Button or lately ONAP. And we take all these components and try to put together and hopefully improve overall quality of all these components for 
everyone, anyone who wants to use these components for different purposes. Now, since we are using uh, stable versions of these components, it is a bit slow to provide this feedback to upstream communities. For example, if you look at our latest release in OPMFE, we did that around October. Let's see if, yeah. We did the release around uh, October and we used Okata as part of our release. By that time, OpenStack already released Pike. Pike was released around September and we released OpenFE in October with Okata, so we were at least six months late than upstream. And since the point of OPNFE is integrating these components and finding what works and what doesn't from Tyco point of view, when we find problems with these components and how they work together and go back to those communities, it's pretty late already. It's six plus months. And all the communities we work with, they are pretty helpful and friendly and so on, but if you put yourself in their situation, if someone comes to you after half a year and asks you, okay, we have, a dis we have this problem, how can we fix this? You might have already moved on to another item in your backlog and you might not have time and interest in fixing th that thing. Or maybe that thing might even gone out from your stack. So you might not have any possibility to fix that either. So this speed uh, we have been doing things in OPNFE is kind of became, it became a bit challenging for us because we are not talking about single community OpenStack. We are talking about more than 10 communities maybe. And if you put all these uh, delays, months of delays together, it's like years of delays in, when it comes to feedback time we are getting out of our integration efforts. And based on these findings, we started thinking about how we can make things faster and become more relevant to communities we are working with. And then we started talking with Open Daylight community originally, and we said, guys, yeah, we are getting official release from you, but can we get more recent versions of your uh, technology, your component, a bit faster than how we are doing? And they start working on this together with us to enable continuous delivery in their community so we can do continuous integration in OPNFE. And as one of our friends, Daniel Farrell, says, like OPNFE can go as fast as slow as it of its upstream. So if someone is very slow, we can't be faster than that community because we depend on them. And by using this thinking and using Open Daylight as our uh, first uh, community to go after this continuous delivery idea, uh, we brought up uh, this continuous delivery pipelines from Open Data, which basically means that whenever they build something in their CI using their auto-release process from their master branch, it should be possible to get that latest built and tested artifact into OpenFE environment. So we can basically integrate latest and greatest version of Open Daylight into our NFE platform. And that looked very positive and we start thinking about how we can do the same thing for the other communities we are working with. And as I mentioned many times, we are working with OpenStack as well and OpenStack is pretty important in NFE reference platform. And we start with OpenStack community saying, okay guys, we want to do what we have been doing with Open Daylight community and we want to consume the latest and greatest versions of OpenStack from master branch. And based on those conversations, maybe we can uh, go here, this, uh, let me, yeah, based on those conversations we came to a conclusion that okay, we can uh, find an easy way to get the uh, OpenStack version from Trunk. And we started working on this about a year ago and we now have a way to deploy OpenStack from Trunk, which basically means that whatever OpenStack community has been working during this release cycle, in this case it's Queens, we get that version at least, uh, in worst case, in a week later, which basically cuts the feedback time from six months to a week, which is a great improvement. And again, if you look at all these different uh, components in an FE stack, you can see how big difference this could make. Instead of waiting for months for different communities to send fixes to us, we can get those fixes in a week's time and hopefully later on 
on a daily basis. And you see all these uh, different uh, things on this slide, and it's really a complicated thing to do this work, integrate these components. And obviously, we are not doing this manually. We have uh, a CI machinery for OPNV, and which basically uh, goes through different uh, compositions of the platform because some of the components can't be collocated together, and some of the components uh, are more, more people are looking after them or more people are interested in them. Based on those things, we create different combinations which we call scenarios. And first thing we do is basically we provision our machines with uh, three different Linux, one of the three different Linux distributions, Ubuntu, CentOS, or OpenSUSE, and then we put either OpenStack or Kubernetes on them. And then we put different net, uh, STN controllers instead of Neutron, for example, we put Open Daylight or Onos. And then we construct different uh, features like service function chaining or BGB VPN. And finally, once we construct or compose this uh, combination, we run testing against this integrated stack, which is a big difference comparing to OpenStack or OpenDaylight or other communities because they mainly deal with their own components in very small scale. And in our case, we put all these components and try to find what works and what doesn't. And as I said, this is impossible to do manually. And we have a CI machinery for uh, OPNFE, which uh, uses distributed bare metal labs all around the world. And currently, it's like, I think, 15 labs they are providing resources. And we have more than 200 bare metal nodes supporting two architectures, x86 and ARM. And as part of our latest release, we had more than 50 scenarios, more than 50 different combinations of components and we deployed OpenStack more than 8,000 times in six months' time because we continue to try deploying things and try to see if they work. And we start with open day, uh, daylight when it comes to XCI consuming things from uh, master branches and then we, are, we have been working with OpenStack which we can uh, deploy both OpenStack and open daylight from trunk and we, uh, Fido uh, has been uh, handled in a similar way but in different uh, scale in OpenFV because that only de dealt with FIDO and OpenStack. In our case, we are dealing with all the components we have or aiming to deal with. And hopefully, we will include ONAP into this as well. And these are CI pipelines. These are uh, upstream project CI pipelines. They all have their patch set verification, daily master jobs, and so on. And we continue to track the master branches to find working versions, and once we find working versions on them, we pin those versions in OPNV repos, and then run, uh, create the scenarios using those pinned versions and run testing against them on bare metal nodes. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going, okay. I'm going to talk a bit about the, the tooling that we are using for that. So we are having different components here, we have Zool, Bifrost, OpenStack Ansible, and Kubespray. So Zool is what we are using for project gating. Oh, no. Okay, this one. Um, we are using that for project gating. It means uh, that all the changes that are created in a project, they go through, through this Zool component, and it will pass a set of pipelines to verify that the jobs are, are working and that, in a, that they're in a good state to be, state to be merged. Uh, so one Zool is doing all the jobs, uh, they pass through the gate pipeline, that is the one that is used for merging, uh, passes a lot of checks there, and after that it goes and merges into the code and you can trigger another set of jobs to, to do the package building or publishing or whatever. And then we are using Bifrost that is used uh, for hardware provisioning, so if you have a set of parameter server or, or VMs, we are going to use Bifrost. Okay. So Bifrost is uh, just a set of Ansible playbooks to deploy an standalone Ironic. So Ironic is a component of OpenStack that is in charge of provisioning virtual machines or parameter servers especially. Okay. It is in in Ansible and it supports like three major distros like it is Ubuntu, CentOS and OpenSUSE. Um, to use Bifrost, uh, it is very easy to, to use. It's just a set, it's installing a set of Ansible playbooks and you basic, basically have four steps. So first one, you need to create an inventory that is uh, collect all the data from your servers, like the IP address, user and password you are going to use to, to connect. You put it uh, on a file. 
After that, you run the second step that is installing Bifrost. So it is a set of playbooks that will install Bifrost on your server. And once you have it running, you will do the enroll step. That uh, it means it will collect all the information from your inventory. It will run on your, your machines, and it will collect uh, info of their machines, uh, like uh, hardware, uh, type of disk, uh, all the, the information you need to introspect the, the data. And it will pass to a database. Once it is, you have it stored on the database, it's the uh, final step to deploy. Uh, so what that deploy means, it, will, it means that it will take all the parameter servers, it will install the operating system that you want there, like you can install CentOS, Ubuntu. Also, you can cost customize the image that you are going to, to install, so you can add like custom packages or extra configs, extra projects there. So you will have all the servers in the, the same state, the desired state after that. Uh, it will also add you a basic network config, so all the all the parameter servers will be accessible in the network the way you, you choose, and it will also copy SSH keys. So you will have SSH keys that you decide, and you could, could access the servers with that after it. It is very solid. I mean, it, it has been used uh, in all OpenStack distros, so op all OpenStack that they are using Metal are mostly using Ionic. And we are running third-party CI tests on it. It means that all the changes that go with on Bifrost, that it is an OpenStack project, are gated also against the, our OpenFV testing. So we validate that uh, any change in Bifrost is, is breaking the OpenFV CI setup, so it's really good for that. You can, we can trust in, in Bifrost. Okay, next step is OpenStack Ansible. It is a, a tooling for installing OpenStack. Basically, there are several toolings, like Triple O, but we choose this one because it's easy to customize. It's based on Ansible as well, and it's very, very flexible. You can choose the way you want to deploy OpenStack there. Uh, you can use it uh, in containers using LXC, or you can deploy directly on bare metal. It is very, very easy to integrate and very flexible. I mean, you can decide the, the type of, of roles uh, you want to include in your deployment. If you want to include Nova, Keystone, HA or not, or even if, especially for OpenFV, you can write your own roles. So you can decide. I need to put any extra layer on top of OpenStack. Okay? <laughs> uh, it also has several ways of, of deploying. So you can deploy on developer mode and production with HA, with NFS, you can complicate it uh, as much as, well, as you want. And then we support also major distros, like it's Ubuntu, CentOS, and OpenSUSE as well. Okay, so final one. Use Kubespray. Uh, so we started also to, to work a bit on Kubernetes. So the, we are starting to use Kubespray. So it is a, a set of Ansible tool playbooks again to install a, open, a Kubernetes cluster that is created inside Kubernetes community. Uh, it can be created on multiple platforms. You can deploy on, for example, you can deploy on metal virtual machines, like with Ansible, or there is also possibility to do it on OpenStack, on Amazon, so it's quite flexible for that. Although it's also very composable, so you can decide uh, the kind, for example, the kind of network plugin you, you want to bring. You can have different options there. Uh, it's supporting CoreOS, Ubuntu, Debian, so you have flexibility there. And it's solid because it has like end-to-end -end integration testing, like perform it on different platforms as well, so it's reliable. And well, we are starting to do it as a proof of concept. So we have mostly OpenStack down there, but we're starting to, to get Kubernetes integrated into OpenSD as well. Okay, so I think mostly well, if you have, let's give five minutes for questions. Uh, before we move to questions, I want to highlight now, okay. we talked about NFV, SDN, and tooling, and CI, and stuff here. The main thing we are trying to achieve is basically to increase the awareness in open source communities when it comes to integrating all these components together and creating a platform. Because some communities are pretty good when it comes to continuous delivery and DevOps stuff, but some communities are starting, just starting now. And based on what we have been trying to do, the different communities started understanding what we are trying to do. And I think first time in like the in CI C D space, many different communities coming together to have a workshop in uh, during OMS to talk about these things to see how we can establish continuous delivery of work in open source. So it is more than just what we talk about here. It is about a cultural social change. Well, now we can take one or two questions maybe.
So would you be interested in CI integration with ONOS? Uh, we have been trying to reach out to ONOS and I suppose we have done that right now, yeah? We can start talking now. Yeah, ONOS was part of OpenV like one or two years ago and then they disappeared and we want them to come back. So we are interested. One last question. I did, just say it and I'll repeat the question. Uh, are all your pipelines fully automated or do they require some interaction if, if they fail or if they're disruptive in any way? So are all the pipelines fully automated or is there some human interaction needed for failures? or? All the deployment and testing are done automatically, but we are running more extensive testing comparing to other communities. Now you need the mic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all our deployment and testing are automated, but since we are running quite complicated testing, sometimes it requires human intervention to see what went wrong and reproduce issue and find the problem. Okay, no more time. Thank you very much, Fatih and Yolanda. Uh, our next presentation is from uh, Emma Foley, who's going to present the Barometer Project, which is a, an OPNFE project uh, for collection of platform uh, metrics and telemetry. We've been having some AV issues, Emma. <laughs> <laughs>